This week, I would like to look at a few selection of formula books for your darkroom. So the last time we looked at books, we looked at different ones that discussed how to build a darkroom. And this time, we're going to look at some books that talk about formulas to use in the darkroom, print formulas, uh, film developers, and so forth. Uh, so I've got a few selection of books from my bookshelf since we're in uh, quarantine here in Kentucky for COVID-19, coronavirus. Uh, I've got plenty of time to go through all the books that I've collected over the years. So I have quite a few with different formulas. There are some that I reference often. There are some that I only look at occasionally. So we're going to look at the differences. Um, so the first one, the one I showed at the cold opening, is Photographic Chemistry, uh, and it is by George Eaton. Now, George Eaton was a, um, tells you right here, he was the assistant division head of the applied photography division at Kodak. Um, so he definitely knew his stuff when it came to, uh, to formulas. Let's see here. Yeah. So he's head of the photographic chemistry department and then assistant division head of applied photography. He's a research chemist. So this is a good one to have. It is very light on formulas though, but if you want a better understanding of the chemicals that are used in photography, what their purposes are, what the different things that go in to make a developer, this is a good one to have. It, it is pretty thorough. Uh, it's not a complicated read, but if you want it as a reference, you want to learn more about why some things work better than others or how they work differently, this is a good one to look at. Uh, but like I said, it's, it's light on actual formulas. So if you're looking for a formula book, this may not be the right thing, but it is still a very useful information book. And uh, Mr. Eaton certainly knew what he was talking about. He does talk about both color and black and white in here. Um, it's got a little bit of history, um, but it is still pretty useful. It is, however, Kodak centric. So I will warn you about that. If you are not a huge fan of Kodak as a company, you may not like this particular book because he worked for Kodak and he wrote it while at Kodak. It is a bit Kodak centric in some of the stuff that they talk about. Uh, for example, instead of saying, uh, metal in some of the, uh, the discussions, the, they use the Kodak trade name Elon and stuff like that. So keep that in mind. All right, next one that we're going to just take a quick peek at, uh, photographic facts and formulas. This is by Wall Jordan. That's not in person. I believe that is the publishers. Nope. By EJ Wall and Franklin I Jordan. All right. So this is a bigger volume. Uh, this was an old library book I picked up, I think, at a camera swap or something like that. And it is extensive. So there are chapters devoted to lens formulas, how lens mathematically work. Uh, there are, so power of a lens, that sort of thing. Get the glare off of there. So a variety of different things there. And then they start to get into things like T stops, F stops, EV system. But since this video is about formulas, yes, there are formulas. So again, he talks a bit, of, or they um, talk a bit about the different chemicals used, the purpose of certain things in developers and whatnot. Like here are preservatives. Here's what's used as preservatives. Here's what changes the pH of a developer and how that affects things. But there are formulas. So here's like a normal hydroquinone developer and you look at it and it's basically the same thing as the uh, Kodak Research Lab formula. Then you start getting into stuff like uh, Kodak D61A and DK50, but these are not necessarily Kodak centric. There are 
Ilford, Agfa, Ansco formulas in here, uh, Crawley formulas, all sorts of things like um, Ilford developer ID78. So lots of formulas. So it's a good one to have as a reference. Then he starts getting into all sorts of different things. There are chapters on color chemicals. No formulas there, at least not for modern day stuff. But there's also things like oil, brome oil. There's a section on gum bichromate. All sorts of things. So this is a fairly comprehensive book, but it's only got a few formulas that are not just like commonly used things. Even the ones like I mentioned before, DK50 and stuff like that used to be prepackaged things. So there's not a, uh, it's not the most varied if that's what you're looking for, for your darkroom. If you are wanting a variety of formulas, well, then you're getting into the most common books out there. And that would be the darkroom cookbook. So I have three different editions of this book. This is the second edition. This is the latest fourth edition. And then I've got the third edition digital. So can't show you that one because it's on my phone. Uh, before we get to these though, there are a couple others. So uh, this is by Stephen Anschel, Anschel, Anschel. I don't know how to say his name. Um, but he also came out with the film developing cookbook. This is first edition, second edition was recently published. This book in particular, of course it's about film. You're not going to find print developers and things like that in there. You're not gonna find color, it's purely black and white. Um, if you are on the fence about buying this particular book, uh, first or second edition, be aware it is more of a how-to. It covers a variety of different things such as types of film, procedures for developing, stuff like that, going into mostly text about developers for film. And then what you have to do is go in here and look at some of the sidebars and charts for actual formulas. So if you are looking for just purely formulas, this is not the one that you want to use. It is useful. Um, it is informative, but it's not necessarily just uh, a big catalog of developers that you can mix up, though there are quite a few in there. There are some that are not in Darkroom Cookbook, but uh, it's not necessarily a replacement. I would say this is a supplement for further reading to the Darkroom Cookbook. And then the last one I'm going to show you before talking about Darkroom Cookbook specifically is uh, Kodak. It is Processing Chemicals and Formulas. This is an older book. You can find uh, full-size copies like this, and then there is also a half-size copy. Uh, they are perforated for their uh, notebooks. And it is also talking about different parts of the process, blah, 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 technique, different materials. But then once you start getting into the back, there are formulas. So I've noted some here. If I can find the first one I noted, here we go. And the ones that I noted are not in the darkroom cookbook. So there are some formulas that are different, such as developer uh, D25 formula. I did not find in the darkroom cookbook. There is a Fixing Bath, Formula F7, which is not in the Darkroom Cookbook. So if you have those and you're looking for additional things, this is useful. You do have to be careful of some things, however. For example, this has a formula for Kodak Hypo Eliminator, HE1. Now that is different than a Hypo Clearing Bath, and it's not the same thing as Fixer. This was actually a formula meant to fully 100% eliminate fixer from your print. Kodak for a long time would tell you to use Hypo Eliminator after your Hypo Clearing Agent for longevity. Well, yes, it gets rid of all the fixer, but what they found is that a little bit of residual fixer 
keeps your print from becoming brittle. The gelatin would get too brittle and it would actually start to crack while in storage and stuff like that. So they stopped recommending Hypo Eliminator. Hypo Clear or Hypo Clearing Agent, Wash Aid, stuff like that. Those are still recommended and you want to use those for archival processing. But don't use Hypo Eliminator. Just be aware. So things like that are in that notebook. Okay. Darkroom Cookbook. Like I said, I've got two physical copies. That's a second and fourth edition and a digital copy of third edition. You can see I've got lots of little notes here. So in preparation for this video, I went through and I looked to see, are there any real differences between second, third, and fourth edition? Second edition, all of these pink ones here, and you see there are quite a few. I've got, uh, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, yeah, 11 different formulas that are no longer in fourth edition. I don't believe they're in the third edition either. And some of these, there might be reasons for it, such as Special Developer Kodak 2415 for Technical Pan Film. There is no more Tech Pan. At the time this was published, Tech Pan was a film you could purchase easily. It was a stocked item. Now that it's gone, this formula may not necessarily be useful. However, there are substitute products that may still benefit from formulas such as this. So maybe they will end up back in fifth edition, who knows? Then there are just other film formulas that are gone, such as, oh no, these are print developers too. Some warm tone paper developers that work well with chloride papers. Those would be your contact printing papers like Kodak Azo, which is gone, but there are new substitutes. I think FOMA has made one. Maybe it's FOMA, maybe it's ADOX. Somebody has made uh, another chloride contact printing paper. Um, I'll have to look and see what that is. And if I can get a hold of some, I'll compare it to Lodema, which is uh, produced by Paula Chamley, formerly Michael E. Smith and Paula Chamley, but he passed away recently but I believe they are still, or she is still manufacturing or having that paper manufactured. Uh, so formulas like that may still be useful, but they're no longer in fourth edition. And then I've also tagged some formulas of other things that aren't in here, such as uh, Kodak IN1 Mercury Intensifier. Now that could be because it's mercury, but there are some other intensifiers in here that are no longer in fourth edition, uh, Penacryptol Green, if you're into development by inspection, sticky easel formula, stuff like that. So second edition, there are some things that were taken out, but fourth edition, lots of things here that are new. So I tagged all of those. And we've got, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, at least 12 film developer formulas that are not in second edition. There are six film developers that are not in the third edition. And then I've got only a couple of paper developers like Ansco 103, W130B from John Wimberly. These are new paper developers that were not in second edition. However, the third edition did include those. And then we've got a bunch of other stuff, toners, a bunch of different toners that were not in second edition. And uh, I'll try to actually get the stuff to make these toners and show the differences at some point in time. So there are some toner formulas that were not in the second edition. However, these were all included in the third edition. In fact, my notes here say there were only six film developers, like I said, that were not in the third edition. And then there was one other, I don't know what it was. I don't know, it wasn't a film or paper developer, so it must've been some kind of fixer or something like that, that wasn't in the third edition. So third edition will get you almost exactly the same book, uh, but fourth edition I find to have quite a bit more information because there's some good info about other things that are formula related, such as digital negatives and then 
other techniques uh, that may have been elaborated on in this book that were not in previous. So still a good book to have as a reference. But if you want a little bit more complete, find a second edition. I find that there's things that were eliminated in the more current editions that you might want to get. You never know. Have a big library. Get yourself a shelf. All right, last one I'm going to talk about is, as I drop all kinds of stuff picking it up, Photolab Index. Big, giant, hawking book here. Now this is the Lifetime Edition, which is a lie because they are no longer publishing. It's Morgan & Morgan Inc. Publishers. No longer in business, so I am no longer receiving Lifetime stuff. Not that I ever did. This was They were gone long before I ever got this book. This is a waste of space on your shelf. Don't even bother. And that's not sarcastic, that's legit. It is basically just the technical publications for different films and papers. So if you wanna know the same thing about Kodak Tri-X that you can get, just get from Kodak's technical publication about Tri-X, get this book. And then you can have it all doubled up. There are very few formulas. What formulas are there? Tend to have typos. Typos such as uh, sulfate instead of sulfite, and uh, some measurements that are wrong. Some things that are just inaccurate or incomplete. I have never used this book, and not everything in here. I mean, you look at this book and you're like, wow, that's a lot of formulas. No, actually there's, I think, only six formulas in here, and they're already included in my other things. They are commonly published formulas like Kodak D52, select all. I've got that in four other books here. So I find this to be useless. I know other people think that there's all kinds of great stuff in these. Um, I picked this one up on eBay and quite frankly, I don't know why. I think I was hoping it was this huge encyclopedia of information that I wouldn't get anywhere else. And it ended up being just a absolute waste of space. So I'm open offers. If somebody wants to buy it from me, get off my shelf. All right, so those are the books that I've got today. Uh, when it comes to formulas, uh, I mean, I'm, I use quite a bit in my dark room. I'm showing more and more as this channel grows. Once I can get some more photo paper, then I'll try to make some prints using different developers from the same negative on the same paper. So we can kind of see what the differences really are. Some are dramatic. I mean, if you compare Dectol to Select All Soft, there's a big difference. If you compare Dectol to Ilford Multigrade, you'd be hard pressed to see any difference whatsoever. Although, once you start toning things, the developer can make a big difference. That's a whole different series of videos. We'll do that some other time. But if you're looking to get a variety of different formulas or you just want some information, Darkroom Cookbook would be by far the best book, fourth edition, if you just need something that has a big variety. But if you're looking to add to your bookshelf and you want some more information, I would go with the Photographic Chemistry from uh, George Eaton or the Photographic Facts and Formulas. Those are both two books that are probably not on your shelf that have additional information to add to the Darkroom Cookbook. So if there are some books out there that you think that I missed or maybe I need to take a look at, then you know, let me know down in the comments. Please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for watching and I will see you next time.